quite the morning we had. Um, really happy with what I saw out of Ontario and really happy what I saw with my own two eyes here in Ohio. Uh, I trained four horses this morning, both the Michigan breads in preparation of their departure. A lot of people asking, when are they going, when are they going, when are they going? Relax, they're not going just yet. They're leaving tomorrow for Michigan to Don Harmon Stable. Krista and Don are going to get the Sunset Acres girl who's changed quite a bit from last year. She went with a really tight hobble last year and I found her much better with a longer hobble. I told you in the qualifier I thought she was being a bit of a mongrel to be honest. Uh, throwing herself and acting up. Uh, she trained two days later. We changed some equipment. Uh, added some weight because she does use a lot of weight up front. Added some weight and she was better. Hi. Added some weight and she was better. And then come back today uh, with another strong mile in 2-4. So Saturday back Friday racing uh, on the 19th, so in five days, which is perfect timing actually. Uh, really happy with what I saw from Sunset Acres Girl. She is an enormous filly this year. Um, and Mountaineer Prince, That's I trained him in 2-7, last half of 102. As easy as you could ask a horse to train. He was very, very good today. Um, and I'm not judging him on, on a scale of, well, he's only got to go to Michigan. I'm judging him on a scale of what I expect our two-year-olds to look like right now. And I was thoroughly impressed with what I saw from Mountaineer Prince. So happy with him in regards to him heading into the summer. number of people asking about the other Michigan bred. I'm a trucker. He is back in and jogging very good right now. He's quite a ways from being able to race. Um, but, man, he looked very good. The, the two days that I saw him uh, jogging so far here. He's been back in for maybe five, six. Uh, him and Grand Old Chap come in around the same time, and both Colts looked uh, looked very, very good. Now, as it goes to uh, who else did I train today, I went with um, I also went with Atrant, who looked exceptionally good. Now, I only went a mile and a half with her, but she felt very solid, very quick on her feet. She is coming along really, really nicely. Um, and the last horse, oh, Cado. Now, Cado, uh, at a little temperature, was fine this morning. Ate all his lunch, seemed great. Ate all his breakfast, seemed good. I went out and I went a mile in uh, 220 with him. And it was going to be his only mile in 220 today. But he made a break in the turn after. And I just felt that he was hitting his hobbles really hard. You'll hear me say that sometimes. We'll talk about that with another horse today. Just felt like when push came to sh when push came to shove, and they go to stretch out, that bang, you can feel them. Just kind of the hobbles kind of grab them a little too much, and I don't often uh, resort to the belly band hobbles. And in fact, I had talked to a gentleman yesterday, the gentleman who's now training Resolute Bay, and I told him I hate the belly band hobbles for the most part. I, I won't use them unless I absolutely have to. And, and by that, um, what I mean by that is if the horses look like they they aren't happy with the hobbles that are on them. Once in a while, once in a blue moon, you'll see us do this. And um, it's more of a trial and error type situation also. So we put the belly band hobbles on Cadeau, and I went out and trained him a quarter, 28 and four. Pulled him up, and I walked him back to the barn. I have every intention of bringing him to the Meadows and qualifying him in Pennsylvania on Tuesday. Just a 5 eighths mile track. Let him stretch, stretch his legs out. He felt very strong this morning. Thoroughly impressed with him. Just added a Murphy blind on the left. Uh, removed the back to the bike hobbles and, and added the belly band hobbles to him. It just seems like a different horse today to me. Now we'll see what Tuesday brings us. Different surface, different track. Does a different horse show up? I don't think so. He's on the edge. Like you've got to hold them together. You can't just not not like our horses this time of year. I like them so that you can just kind of drive them like race horses. He's not there yet. You still got to hold them together. You still got to know where he's a little soft and uh, and protect him a little bit. Addy, turn that down, please and protect him a little bit, but um, he was good. He was good the horse this morning, so I was happy with what I saw from the trainers here. Really happy the way the horses are rounding into shape in general for us here at uh, in Ohio. And then I got a real good look at a couple of dandies for us in Ontario. Now, Chicago Hall missed last week. Um, didn't train hard last week, so we all knew uh, he'd been in 2-5 last half in 59. He was ready for about 2-2, two, 2-3. Two, two, now, James was mad after the race. They put an ear hood on him because he warmed up and he was pretty aggressive at the farm. Now, I don't really judge the horses going slow, but at the same to token, this would fall into hindsight. Usually he's lazy in the mile. And I know I, I try to I try to tell everybody, don't judge or change equipment based on a mile in 235. 
with a, especially a baby. Having said that, there is a component of error on the side of caution when it comes to our babies. The last thing I want is for Chicago Hall to be out and be hot on James and do things that we don't want to see him do. James was angry because he never picked the lines up, never picked the bit up, and he had to kind of chase him the whole way, and he didn't really want to he didn't really want to strike him, which I don't, I don't, I don't blame him for doing that, and I appreciate the fact that he didn't. Uh, but that, as I said to James, that's kind of where he's ready to go, right? Two, three, last half, fifty-nine, last quarter, twenty-nine, four. Not flashy, but we know why. Most importantly, how was he? He said, "What do you mean? On a line? Was he rough in the turns? Was he unsafe anywhere?" He said, "No, he was just like he was last time. Perfect. The horse was perfect. He just never picked the lines up." I said, okay, well, we, can, we can fix that part. Don't worry. Don't worry about that. I'm more, uh, I find myself, I felt very uncomfortable because I felt like I, I was James talking to Anthony. <laughs> That's what it felt like. So it was it was, it was was kind of uncomfortable for me. Uh, I just said, don't worry about it. We'll take the hood off him next week. You know, and, and uh, you can be sure he won't be quiet next week. And as long as he was sound and comfortable, you know, same type of thing. Go, go a mile in two minutes, come 28 seconds with him. I, I love Century Legion. I think he's got a, a wealth of talent. We're going to talk about him in a minute. Uh, but I still believe that that's, that Century, uh, that uh, Chicago Hall might still be our, our deepest two-year-old. That says a lot, considering what kind of a mile Century Legion went. Now, before everybody gets their feathers ruffled, uh, I think it's worth noting that one horse has proven he can go fast and the other one is projected to go fast. So before we get all at a, at a sorts, Century Legion looked amazing today. 57 and four in the end of it, uh, a mile and two minutes and a piece. We are gonna have some changes on him because James and I had a very good conversation about Legion also. He said when push came to, came to shove and I called on him, he kind of hit the hobbles and, and kind of softened on me. I said, well, I think there's a lot going into that. The reason you felt him hit the hobbles down the lane, you didn't feel them at the quarter pole was because he was doubled up. I don't think it's as much he was hitting the hobbles as he was slipping a little bit. And you'll see this with flip-flops with horses. When you got them doubled up and on the iron, they can advance, right? They're, they're all up on the muscle. But when they're starting to flatten out a little bit and you kind of ask them for more and they falter or they tire out, they seem to tire out quick, I find a lot of the times they're just slipping a bit. Now, we, I saw that quite a bit. Westland Warrior was a horse we saw that with here, uh, and I qualified him the other day. Totally different horse with a 916 trotting shoe on rather than a flip flop. And as Danny said, I wanted to check with Danny. I just want to jump to conclusions. So I said, how long has he had the flip flops on for? And have, was he? Why did we put them on? Was it just that he had them on? Because everybody gets them at our barn. The last two years, we've just trained them down that way unless they can't go with them. My Wicked Heart still has them on. They have to come off especially a pacer, especially her. Can't afford to give up any speed with little wicked heart. Um, but he said, no, he was always sound. He was always good. Yes, he was better with the flip-flops on in the winter, but uh, he can easily have them off. So Century Legion, we're going to take those flip-flops off and add a 916s trotting shoe instead of the shoes he is on now. Now, uh, it is exactly 14 days before the before the Tompkin gears at, uh, at Mohawk which has been moved from the metal hands. I, I, I don't know what went on there, but they completely just uprooted the stake and moved it to another country. It went from always a metal hands race to now a Mohawk race. So the Tompkin Gears is on the uh, 28th of June, and almost certainly you're going to see Century Legion. Hopefully we can get a race into him next Friday. That would be, that would be ideal. If he can race next Friday, then we can um, gauge how do those shoes work? Now, worst case scenario, we can likely school him next Friday. I'm hopeful we can school him next Friday and get a real good feel for that. So a number of things went on today in Ontario. Uh, Brace for Landing trained today. James went with Brace for Landing. I'm going there to drive him. I said, please do me a favor. Go trip with the horse. Change all of his equipment. I want to shake him up. I want him, I want him kind of shook out of that funk and on his toes. So if you've been wearing an open, put a closed on him. Take the hood off him. You know, I, I wouldn't take the snake cord off him because I know he can get a little rowdy. But just change him up. I want him aware. Right? I want him awake. So James said he actually trained very good. He said he was a little rude in the warm-up, but trained very good. So that's good. Uh, no, All gas, no brakes trained in 58. James said he was pacey. But he said, I know that you said it was mostly on a deep track. So they were just starting to cut the track. And I went in front of them where the track was still firm. And I found him still a little pacey. So that doesn't mean that it's not the shoes. 
but just the deep track being the primary cause is unlikely. James said I had to hold them together in the turns and a couple of times, but I went a mile and 58. The power is there, the strength is there. He's sound. I just felt that he was uh, a little pacey. So we only have full swedges on him up front, turn around backwards. That's what I. That's what we put on him when we bought him last year. I don't care about that. I would change it in a heartbeat. I said, do you think we need to tinker? And he says, no. I told Dom just to put a set of toe weights on him. And if he warms up like that, maybe just throw a set of bell boots on him also. Fair assessment. That's exactly what I would have said also. So that's the plan with all gas, no brakes. He's tight. He's ready to go. He's ready to qualify. James is going to go with him on Tuesday. So two for two in that department. And then I'm going to finish our video this morning with a spectacular mile from Century Legion. The horse was incredible this morning. For a horse to do that on his own, uh, last half 57 and 4, it just shows he's dedicated to, you know, what somebody might say is craft, right? He's dedicated to his work. And uh, happy, I said, was he hot? He said, no, he was perfect. We put the snake cord on him three weeks ago because he was a little grabby. And, you know, Danny's old school. He would rather go with a Crit Davis and an open bridle and a hood. Absolutely not. I, I don't subscribe to that. Put the snake cord on him make him pay attention and that's exactly what we did so closed bridle ear hood that can be changed out for ear plugs also uh, snake cord on him we are going to remove the flip-flops on Century Legion and go to a 916 shoe reason being James said I kind of did call on him halfway down the lane and he hit the hobbles and kind of it kind of softened up on me and you might say well he could have been tired I don't think so he's an athlete he's pretty strong cold I think he hit those hobbles slipped a little bit and it's just tired him out right and um I could be wrong, but there's one way to find out for sure. I'm not preaching and saying I'm absolutely right. Every horse is different. The horses we did it on over here, dramatically different for the positive. Doesn't mean that that's going to be the same for this colt. So it's pretty simple. Try out, trial and error. Put them on the horse. Um, look, I forgot to get gas. Mm. Um, put the hobbles on the, or put the, the nut. Sh 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 yes, you can go swimming, honey. Put the 916s on the horse. Race him next Friday and see how he feels, and or or sorry, or school him next Friday and see how he feels. But get a feel for Century Legion heading into the Tompkins Gears. I know it's not the Breeders' Crown, and I know he doesn't have to be completely on his toes. But you know what? I want to make sure he's prepared and ready to go. This will be a summer. Ah, 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 I'm talking you. This will be a summer of our horses being ready to go and prepared. You saw that last night. You saw it throughout the week. We're going to take a real tough, a real strong look at our horses, reevaluate everybody. The ones that are not going to be effective for us will leave over the next two weeks because we are going to also start acquiring some horses. As I said to you yesterday, we've put uh, our Ontario trainers, both Harry and Dominic, in a pretty precarious situation, a pretty tough spot to be in where we're racing inferior horses at one of the toughest tracks and toughest meets in North America. We need to do better by them. We're going to start acquiring some better horses, but that does mean the inferior horses need to leave, and they will be over the next two weeks. So that's the plan we have for the summer. We've been off to a fantastic start. No racing for the two-year-old yet, unless the draw is done. None yet. None have raced for money yet, but I'll tell you one thing, uh, a lot of excitement following the stable right now for what took place over the last couple of weeks and most definitely what took place today. A great job by James with Century Legion. Great job with him. I know it wasn't how he wanted uh, Chicago Hall to qualify, but you're going to see the proper Chicago Hall next Friday. I can assure you of that. Take care.